Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And we are going to make some um, folders, notebooks, whatever you want to call them, to hold extra pieces of like ephemera, little fussy cuts, that kind of thing. You could put stickers in these, um, if they have the back on them, of course, because this is paper. And I've got two different options. And of course, then these can also be customized to any size you want. So the first one is made out of scrapbook paper. I'm gonna show you that one in a minute. And then the second one is made out of file folders. And I haven't really decorated the front. I don't know, I may put my name on there in a fun way. I did leave this little, it's just a manila folder. And so I left this open in case there was something a little larger, I guess, that I wanted to stick in there, you know? Um, this is an envelope full of stickers, right? And that could go in there. So, um, anyway, but it's a series of folders um, that, and I'll show you how I attached them together. It's a no-sew, for those of you that don't want to sew. Um, and, yeah, I just filled it up. I, I emptied one whole, whoa, I didn't empty it. Oh, my gosh, it must have been tucked in there. Um doodad a uh, doodad box <laughs> so anyway I was kind of excited about that um, and then a few pieces from some of the scrap of paper I used I did stick in here that I ended up not using um, but yeah I just made a whole bunch of different size pockets to hold different kinds of little pieces. This is a little lot to look at, I think. Um, it's a little busy, but you know, I can kind of, when I'm trying to decorate or collage, I think I would easily be able to just grab something in the right color palette. Obviously, you could super organize this and have like a page of just words and a page of just these types of labels and a page of bird fussy cuts. You know, you really could go through and super organize it. I know myself, I'm never gonna keep up with it. Now I did, I had a pile of things that kind of coordinated um, from some different kits and I did try to stick those in the same pocket, but hmm, yeah, I, I know I'm not gonna keep it organized. And then this, I was gonna show you what this is. This was a folder and I had just a few of them. Um, and they, they have this in there. So I think it was for like for meetings and they would collate your papers, the Pendaflex divided up folder. I had a couple in just the neutral color and then um, I think a red one. I don't know. So I, I am using this. These, these are not at all necessary. I'm just using what I have, okay? Um, I did link, in case you want some of these, um, in my Amazon store so you can see, like, the dimensions of what I'm using and everything. But I glued it together and made the pockets not quite so deep. Like this one I, I glued across. So anyway, I'll show you how I did that in case you want to. But, um... You can just use regular regular folders if you have a bunch of these laying around. Um, and then depending on how you gl glue them together, like I was, anyway, I, I glued the orange one backwards. So it's a little bit longer. It's okay. It's on the front. Um, but I'll show you all of that. So we can make one like this if you happen to have file folders. But I thought not everybody has a bunch of file folders laying around. So... I also made a version with scrapbook paper. And it's a little bit, just because I think how I chose to do it, um, a little more, the pages are a little more symmetrical. I haven't filled this one up all the way. Um, I started pulling things out of this little doodad box to fill this one up and then decided I wanted to make the video and I was tired of organizing my doodads. So there you go. I had these two, um, things that I had printed out at some point and I decided to just glue. Did I leave the pocket? I don't think I left a pocket on this one. I decided to just glue these down to make the cover a little bit thicker, but these are those kind of scrapbook paper pads you can get like at Michael's that um, a lot of us have and I just, you know, picked a few pages I hadn't used and started making it. So, it's super easy um, once you have the general construction of how to put your little book together. So let's make the scrapbook paper one 
first, um, and I chose to make mine eight inches tall. And so I cut my 12 by 12, where did I put my scrapbook paper? My 12 by 12 scrapbook paper at eight inches on one of the sides, okay? Um, and I was trying to, this one, pick papers that I probably, I don't know, I like brown, but anyway, that I probably wouldn't use as, as much. Um, these are eight inches by 12 inches, and I'm making mine with one, two, three, four, five pieces of paper, and that's the size of this one is, okay? Now, obviously, you could make this a nine, um, and then when, with a half an inch spine, it's um, eight by five and three quarters finished. You know, you could make it nine by five and three quarters. You could, um, I wouldn't make a spine much bigger than this or much more narrow because it's really hard to work with um, just because I don't think it would be very sturdy, but you do you if you want to try to make a really thick one. Um, okay, so. 12 by 12 paper, cut it at eight inches. We're starting with five of them. The pieces, the four inch strip that we cut off, I'm gonna then be turning into my different size pockets inside my ephemera holder, all right? Okay, I hope you guys like this idea. And like I said, I'll show you the file folder one. There's really not any scoring or cutting. It's just attaching it together. So we'll do that one at the end if you're interested. If you're more interested in that one, you could pass forward. It won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> okay, so for each piece of your scrapbook paper on the 12 inch side, you want to score it at five and three quarter inches and six and a quarter. And this is going to make, make sure you fold it neatly, this is going to make your half an inch spine, okay? And we're doing five sheets and I'm doing, I'm scoring them all the same way. They, they nestle together fine, they don't get too thick on the, the, um, on the spine. But it makes it nice and sturdy. All right, so five and three quarters, six and a quarter and I'm going to just do that really quick on each of these um let me take just this moment to, to thank you guys for watching um and joining me it makes me happy when you guys um leave me comments and let me know that you're there you're out there um so ooh, and don't score too hard because you don't want to push through your paper I think I'm okay I think I'm okay um, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, leave me a comment, tell me what y'all are thinking about the project and if you're going to make one. Um, there are so many different variations, I think, on how we could do this project. I even started thinking, wouldn't it be cool to just use one of those books? Did you guys ever collect stamps? Um, I think the little pocket that you slide the little stamps in would be ideal for all the little pieces of doodads that I have laying around. Um, and that's not an option you make yourself. But um, anyway, that's something to consider. This one I scored too rambunctiously. We will repair it. I will show you how to do that. Um, but then there's a lot of people that I know that have made these types of folders and they'll use vellum because it's sort of see-through and it's a little easier to see what you have in the pocket. I really like that idea, but I have trouble sometimes, um, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, I have some glue and tape and things that hold the vellum, but I, for something like this, I would feel much more comfortable if I sewed around each pocket if I was using vellum. And I was trying to make this a no-sew project, but, Again, I know a lot of people have a lot of success with glue and stuff on vellum. I just didn't want to risk my pockets all coming apart and they having a big, big mess, a big pile. Okay, so now we have five pieces. I'm going to find the one piece that had that slit and we're going to use our ever trusty washi tape. Doesn't matter what color or what design. It is going to reinforce where this rip is for me. 
and um, I'm not worrying about putting 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 any extra glue on this one right now because I think it's going to be fine when I attach it. Okay, I'll definitely make this one not be the cover. I don't want that little slit there. Okay, so I guess pick the piece of paper you do want to be the cover of your journal, knowing you can always decorate it however you like, a lot or a little. It is nice having pretty things for our supplies, but I didn't go like huge on the um, decorating because I was trying to make this just be something a little bit functional for me on my desk. All right, this is gonna be my cover. I kind of like the, the barn. Okay, so we're gonna lay that one flat. Now, each of the other pieces that are gonna go in here, I am using two-sided tape, and it's, um, I believe this is the, it's the half an inch, and it is, if I'm careful, I can get it right in where I have scored this paper. Now, with this dark paper, I know it's hard to see where I'm at, and even if I ink it, <laughs> it's not you're not going to be able to see it. I will do it on one of the lighter papers so that you can see what I'm doing. So you're going to just add your tape. Now you can use wet white glue if you want to. I wouldn't use a glue stick. Um, but use really good quality glue. Use two-sided tape, something like that. So let me really quickly show you guys on one you can see. All right, you are gonna add your tape right along the spine. And again, you wanna be neat and do a full strip of tape if you're using tape. If you're doing glue, you wanna probably work a little more slowly when you're actually attaching the pages because you wanna give it enough time to dry and where nothing will slip, okay? So I'm gonna, again, just really quick lay these down. <clears throat> so I have decided, because I'm not busy enough, right, that I'm definitely doing the craft fair that's at the end of November, so I have plenty of time. I'm still sitting here, it's still September, so I think I'll be okay. Um, and I started making a list of um, some of the projects. I, you know, I may take, if I have a few journals or just some of the random pieces that I like to make, um, bookmarks and little tags and things like that. But I find at craft fairs, a lot of people don't know what they're looking at with my junk journals. So I'm going to be doing like my um, hot chocolate favor. I've got a hot tea favor with a little honey packet and a tea bag. I've got all kinds of things like that that are gonna be holiday themed, so stay tuned. Okay, we are ready to start assembling, but again, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So let me ink here for you. Okay, so now you can see where we're gonna be attaching it. If your paper has directionality, you know, make sure like you know which way your paper is so that they're not upside down. All right, I'm gonna pull the tape. Now you can, to give yourself a little extra time, these are the same, this is just the Lineco PVA glue that I like. And if you want to see some of the supplies that I use, um, check out the link to my Amazon storefront. It's an affiliate link, so I get a few pennies. If you make a purchase, no cost to you. Hey, get that out of the way. Um, but if you want to see the glue I'm using or the type of tape I'm using, that kind of thing, you can check it out. Now, by adding the glue on top of the tape, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that I get this lined up straight. But I am just going to stick my paper down and try to get the pages as straight as I can and right in that spine, okay? So now they are glued together. 
I'm just gonna burnish it down some. Now, you don't have to add the glue. I didn't in the one that I made off camera. But if you just wanna make sure you've got that little bit of extra time, that would be my suggestion. Okay, we'll do this one next. It doesn't really matter what order you put your pages in unless you care about you know your different patterns and things. Um, I'm just gonna go for it with this one. And when I do the go for it method, I tend to hold it down with a finger and then line up this edge the best that I can and then drop it. And it worked fine. So wherever your comfort level is. And again, I don't mind if mine's just a tiny bit off. Again, this is for me and something that, that I'm using. Okay, we will put the piece with the barn on it. And soon this will be put together. Now, the pockets, um, and this is why having that little bit of wiggle time, because this one did not go on straight at all. I got too confident. <laughs> Let's see what happens. It's going to be a little off and a little cattywampus. So, Again, unless you don't mind yours being cattywampus, do as I say, not as I do, right? Add your glue. I'm going to add the glue this time to give me the wiggle room. Um, the pockets, that's what I was starting to talk about. And this is the same regardless of if you use the file folders or you use scrapbook paper. And it's the same regardless of what style or what size you choose. Excuse me, what size you choose. Um, oh, I should have nestled this one in the middle so you don't really see that piece of tape. Oh, well. <laughs> We're going to see it. And there's some glue. Um, the, the pockets are just like pockets we make that I've shown you guys in other videos. And we'll go through and make a few. But it also depends on what type of ephemera pieces you have. Like I have... I mean, I have some pieces like this that I haven't used that'll fit in these deeper pockets, but I really have need in my life for these little teeny tiny pockets, the ones that are quite shallow for all of these little tags and pieces. So depending on how you plan to use yours, you know, you may want to have a lot more of these little shallow pages with the little shallow pockets if you know you have larger pieces or you want this for pieces like before you've even cut them up maybe you've got a sheet of fussy cuts and you're just gonna cut out a couple and then you want to store them until you're ready to cut them out you might want some larger pockets right like these are a bunch of journaling cards that I just haven't used yet that I went ahead and stuck in here this is that example I haven't if I had already cut all of these little tiny pieces out I'd need the little tiny pockets but I haven't cut them out yet so they fit nicely in this pocket and I can see that I have them so you may want to think about your pockets and the size as you're making your um, as you're making your notebook. Okay, so let me show you how it opens. Because of how we bound it, it kind of lays pretty flat each page. Um, and I do go through, and this is the one that went crazy, and I got all crooked. It's a little sticky, but it's not too bad. And then the other direction. And you'll need to, um, you know, use your bone folder or use the back handle of your scissors, something to kind of crease the pages. And it doesn't hurt the spine to do what I'm doing, which is kind of flatten each page and then bring it back. It's nice and sturdy because there's so many layers of cardstock in there. Okay. So now it's decorating and adding pockets. So I went ahead and cut the four by 12 inch strip left on each piece of scrapbook paper that I used for my pages to make pockets with. And then I go on ahead and cut them to the um, width that I wanted them. And I went with five and a quarter because this page here did I go with five and a quarter yeah five and a quarter because this page here is all a little more than five and a half um 
it, it should be actually five and a half because if we have five and a half, five and a half and a half, um, that would be our 12 full inches. Me and math, right? But a five and a quarter inch piece of paper will fit on each of these pages. So different styles of pockets. Like I said, I um, have did a whole bunch um, that were one inch widths. Okay, so again, just cutting the strips of paper and then we'll have some of the narrow pockets. I left several that were that two inch. So you have a deep pocket and then two narrow ones like that. I did some that were, um, instead of an inch, that were three quarters of an inch. So even, even tinier for those little bitty pieces. So I'll do a few that are three quarters of an inch. And then I did some um, crisscross pockets just for you know some other items and things. So again, you can kind of decide the width and the depth of your pockets. This one is one and three quarters. So we're gonna just um, do one more three quarter. And then we'll have another one inch like those. Okay, now to make the, um, like a crisscross pocket if you wanna do those, or you could just do one corner pocket, right? Again, I like to start with a square, so I'm gonna cut this piece to a four inch square and then just cut the triangles, all right? And then we'll just add a few pockets. We're not gonna do the whole book in the video, but just in case you're brand, brand new and you haven't worked a lot with pockets. Um, but I, again, I, I encourage you, to maybe glue a page of pockets and then let them dry and put a few of your items in there. So do you like the spacing? Do you like how that's working for you? Before you do every page, maybe the exact same way and then you don't like how, how it's fitting together. All right, like we do any other pocket, we're gonna do glue on three sides. I'm holding it by the edge I wanna leave open. And I'm gonna bring it kind of down to near the bottom of the page. Um, I have not layered anything on the cover yet, but it's plenty thick. It'll hold together fine. Um, I think I'm gonna mix up the color of my pockets. So I'm gonna, just for funsies, and I kinda just eyeball the distance between them. Um, I kinda think if I have something a little bit tall coming out of there, it's okay if it covers up the pocket, but I, you know, hopefully don't want it covering everything that I laid in that pocket. And then we'll put one little one up here for some little teeny tiny pieces. And we will let these dry before we start filling them. Okay. Whoa. And you can do that, um, you know, whatever pattern or, or uh, variation of pockets that you want on each page. Now, if we're gonna do the crisscross, I'm gonna do that on the back cover. We're gonna install them this way. Now, I could just put this one and have, you know, have it, but I kinda like this, it gives it a little more um, security there. So, I'm going to glue on two sides it's the simplest corner pocket there is, right? But it does the trick for us. And then the other one. I, um, I like I said, I know myself and that I probably won't stay that organized, but I even thought, you know, if I had a few of these made up when I'm working like um, with a particular kit that has lots of fussy cuts and journaling cards and tags and all of that, it might be fun to have one that I just use while I'm working on projects with that paper kit. And then maybe when I'm done, whatever's left, throw into one of my general ones. I don't know. I kind of gave that some thought. So you can kind of think about how something like this might help you get organized. Uh, I'm gonna add a one inch pocket 
to this page because I don't plan on having really large things that I need to store in here. So I'll be able to add some smaller items up in this pocket. Okay, that one cattywampus page is acting up on me. All right, so now those are ready. So that is honestly my take on how to make an ephemera folder um, just out of scrapbook paper. Um, let's just really quick, not that you can't visualize, but having this little tiny pocket up, well, let's see, this little tiny pocket up here, you can put things that are larger. I think I have a journaling card here. Um, you know, things that are larger in this pocket, it'll hold it. But then you can also have some of these little tiny pieces that you need smaller pockets for at the right, you know, it, it all works. Let me put this one in here. This one I put pretty close to the top of the page, so it's gonna take either little bitty things or things maybe turned that orientation to go in that pocket. And that's what I mean, maybe play with it before you glue them all down. Um, you may not, you may decide, again, you want it down further from the top because then you have a little more real estate there for what you're gonna put in it. And this is part of what happens when I start doing this. I start playing with all of my doodads. And then two hours have gone by and I haven't really accomplished what I wanted to accomplish for the day. <laughs> if you wanna know how my day's been. All right, and then I've got these down here. They can take taller items. Um, it's a pocket that I've cut out but I haven't used. Goodness. There we go. All right. So many options. I hope you like this idea. Now let me show you really quick if you want to use the file folders and why that one to me is so easy, if especially if you have them on hand. But again, I I would probably buy some file folders to make this style because I kind of like it and it definitely holds a lot of goodies. All right. So let me get these folders out. So again, I have a couple that are just um, regular folders. Now the thing about file folders is they have these scores already in there because if, you know, let me go ahead and fold, it's already folded here, right? But if I, I don't know if you guys can see it, if I fold on this score, it gives us a spine that is three quarters of an inch, which works just fine. It's already there, and it's standard, and it's standard across brands. Like this one is from Staples. Now this is one of those divided up folders, but it also has those little score marks. And I'm gonna fold it on. So again, if these were like really full of papers and in a file cabinet, it gives you all that space for all your papers. I think that's what those or four. You know, if you only have a few things, you don't need the gusset. And I think a lot of times we never used those, right? But these are ones that I've actually used. Here's another brand um, or had in my stash to use at some point. And actually file folders are great to have on hand. I do use these, um, just these regular ones when I'm working with a specific kit and I'm planning videos or doing things like that, or I have ephemera from a particular like bird book, you know, vintage book that I am um, playing with. So um, lots of options. So again, I'm gonna do, that's three. We're gonna um, do this one the same, five with, with five pieces. Now, if you don't want yours to be this tall and big, you can always trim your folders down. There's nothing to say. Now these, you probably wouldn't want to cut in half, but on a regular folder, there's nothing to say that you couldn't, you know, cut it to whatever size you wanted. You could have one um, maybe that we cut at 
make it seven and a half inches tall and then make it, you know, this wide or cut it off at five and make like a, a, a smaller one. You can do a five by five or a five by four, or a little tiny one. So the same with the scrap of paper, make them whatever size you want. Okay, I am going to, I'm gonna use one of these for my cover. Ooh. And this is gonna come together the exact same way. So no, no big secrets, but I will say I like to glue these together first if you're gonna use these. So obviously if we just put glue right along here, that'll keep anything from flying out this way. But if you remember, I said, I'm not gonna have anything super huge to put in my ephemera folder and this pocket goes all the way down to the bottom um, and this one as well, right? So I wanna shorten these up before I glue the edges together. And the best way I know to do that without taking this apart is I just grabbed my glue and did a line of glue just like that. And yeah, I don't know if you can even see that, okay? So I have glue, and now I'm gonna just drop it and close it. <laughs> so this is now closed. And then for the next one, again, I don't want it to be that um, deep, so I'm doing the same thing, and I'm just eyeballing it. These are still obviously going to be deeper than my little skinny ones, but I'll have it now if you want to leave this one the full length you can or you can be like me and even shorten it up because I like mine short okay now those tabs hang over so you do want to be careful with your glue all right it's that easy and it really does hold together okay so this is gonna be my cover, which I will probably one day decorate, but not going to decorate today. And I am again going to grab my two-sided tape. And if you have a wider two-sided tape, you could certainly use it. I'm just gonna go with the half an inch that I have. If I can find my scissors. And we are gonna glue the folders together just like we did scrap of paper, so I'm probably just gonna do one. Um, now, the, uh, let me show you really quick what I told you about the mistake that I made. And I usually put the tape on the one I'm gluing down. Um, if you put your folders in um, with the same orientation, your cover will be shorter. Let me just go ahead and stack these together for you. Your cover will be a little shorter, your front cover and pages, than your back cover and pages, okay? So it will look something like this when you're done. I, in my wisdom, wasn't thinking, took one of my pages and did it this way. So then that one was hanging out of the front, co the front cover. Let me pick it up and show you. Again, it wasn't the end of the world. So I had a page that was kind of this depth this depth and then this one's much longer then we go back to the shorter depth and now we're on the back pages so then this one was shorter again and now back to the full depth you decide how you want yours and if that bothers you or not I if I'm paying attention I believe I would prefer mine to be like this so that each of those pages are approximately you know, the same. Um, they get a little bit wider this way as you go because your when you glue these together, it takes up, um, I don't know how to explain that, but you'll have all of these taped and glued together, so it'll scooch it out a little. <laughs> By the time you get to the yellow one, it will be, this layer will be scooched out a little bit more, okay? Sometimes my words aren't coming together. I hope I'm not confusing anybody. All right, I'm gonna pull the tape. I normally do it the opposite way, as I said. And um, 
I am going to add a little glue to give us the wiggle room. And because I'm using tape that's not as wide as my spine, just go ahead and get a little bead of glue there. You don't want to over glue and it ooze out on you and make a mess. Just a word of caution. Again, I'm going to open it up. Lining up the bottom here. hope you guys can see that. I lined up my two creases, the bottom here, and now I'm gonna work that in. I open it up. Didn't My glue didn't ooze, so that's a good sign. <clears throat> and it didn't ooze that way. Whoa, ah, the folder. All right, now obviously there's a lot more space and you saw some of my pages got a little busy and crazy, but I like it. I like looking at all of those things. Um, we'll glue one more down just for fun. Um, tape first. And then we'll call this one done. Um, I think, again, it would be fun to make these, you know, pretty, to have something, you know, really pretty on your desk that you're working with. Um, so that's that's an option. These, these would make nice gifts if you have friends that like to craft. <laughs> it would be a nice gift to give them a folder that they could put all their little bits and pieces in. Um, so just some thoughts. Please let me know if this was helpful or not. There's, again, lots of videos out there with different styles. And if you want like a little little one, a big one, if you want to sew, there's lots that sew. But I have gotten requests from folks at different times to show no sew options if possible. So, and if you wanted to sew, you could put your folders together and put it on your sewing machine and run it down. You could do just a, th with this one, I would do at least a five pamphlet stitch. Um, on the smaller one, a three or a five would probably work. Um, you know, you could definitely sew it together instead of gluing it together. And you can make it as many pages or as few as you want. The other thing is, and I don't think you can make it like 20 pages. I think it would this would get too thick. But with this one even, I could add a couple more pages even after I've been working in it. I would take these out before I tried to glue it down just in case. But, you know, if you needed more room and you wanted, you didn't want a whole another notebook, add a few pages. You could easily do that. All right. So that is what we're gonna do for today. These will get glued in here a little bit when I'm off camera, and I hope um, you'll make one. I hope this inspired you. Let me know. And it's here, and this is, here, let me open it up to that really crazy page. Ha, nope, that's not it. This this is the, what I call the crazy page. I put one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I put so seven over here. So lots of pockets and lots of little pieces of ephemera. So anyway, I hope you'll try one. Let me know. Have a great day.